Whatever rots your socks, whatever spins your top Whatever winds your watch, whatever flips your flop Whatever turns you on, whatever flies your flag Whatever bangs your gong or whatever swings your bag Do it often but do it well Cause nobody knows and there's no way to tell When the ride ends Good morning. Welcome back to Turtle Beach. How was your week? Yeah, I can't hear you. But I will assume you finished with, uh, and how was your week, Steve? My week was terrific. Thank you for asking. Every week is pretty terrific on Turtle Beach. Turtle Beach serves up perfect weeks, like McDonald's serves up hamburgers. Uh, yeah, no, no, no effort on my part. And the week was great. I had visitors at Boontongs, uh, went out to eat a couple times with friends and didn't have to pay. Uh, it was altogether a great week. It had no other milestones that I could think of, uh, but it was a great week here on Turtle Beach. And uh, I am very grateful to whatever powers that be uh, that I chose to come here. You know, I've made the decision to come live in Thailand three times and the decision to go back to Iowa twice. Uh, so uh, I wanted to read you something today from Expat Days. It is the uh, last story in the book and it explains the day the, that I first made the decision to come live in Thailand in 1988. Uh, it is published in Expat Days. I'm going to read it to you. You can treat this like a podcast, uh, turn up the sound, go find something to do with your hands, make paper mache turtle shells, knit, crochet, macrame, masturbate, whatever you want to do. I understand uh, my voice is somewhat arousing to some people. If that's what you want to do in the privacy of your own home while watching this video, uh, carry on brother or sister. Uh, yeah, so uh, some housekeeping before I begin. Uh, thank you for all the positive comments. I think I'm going to switch around the way I do comments. I had stopped responding to the positive comments because there's so many. Uh, but I read everything. I read every comment and I do appreciate the positive ones. And I had, but I had been allowing myself to get drawn into pointless, stupid arguments in the comment section with the haters. This week, I spent way too much time explaining to people that I don't give a rat's ass who plays piano in a tube station in London. I have never been to London. I never will be to London. I, I am 66 years old. I'm never, uh, there's no time left to visit Paris, London, Rome to do the grand tour of Europe. Uh, no, I'm never going to go there, never going to be there. I do not care who plays piano in a, a London tube station. I kept trying to explain people this, and people uh, uh, think that commenting on a on a YouTube video is like you know, uh, Calvin was it Calvin Luther nailing his theses to the church door. Uh, it, it's nothing. It's it's you're just sitting at home playing keyboard warrior. You're hiding behind an avatar. And by the way, if you don't use your real name when you post a comment, you don't have free speech, right? If you're if you're posting under a made up name, you don't have free speech. So in the very simplest gesture, you are not supporting the idea of free speech because you're hiding behind an avatar. I, anyway, yeah, arguments like that, uh, useless, pointless arguments. So I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna ignore the haters not respond at all, and I'm going to say at least thank you to everybody who makes a positive comment uh, and see how much time that actually takes with 300 comments. Steve got it wrong. This is a recurring segment. Again, more housekeeping before I read. Uh, I get it. I, you know, I talk so much. Inevitably, I'm going to get something wrong every day. And uh, uh, I have a segment on this show and Grumpy Old Men, which I hope you watch on Sunday on the channel Tim Newton Today, 
Uh, I, it's a regular segment. Steve got it wrong. So this week, what I get wrong, well, a lot, but what I want to talk about is uh, somebody writing under the name, I think, Poo Rock, P-U-R-O-C-K, if I'm remembering that right, wrote in and accused me of spreading disinformation. They were quite strident. Uh, apparently, uh, this person is an, uh, an emergency room nurse practitioner, what we call a mid-level in the States, uh, nurse practitioners and assi uh, physician assistants, PAs and NPs, and uh, ER, work in emergency, and he or she said, uh, Steve, you, you're spreading disinformation about the STEMI and the LAD, the, the ST elevation myocardial infarction in the left anterior descending artery. I've had two, survived two. I've got seven stents in my coronary arteries right now. Um, room for lots more, they tell me. Uh, I have been told by every cardiologist, which is like three, who's ever cut me open, uh, that it's a wonder that I ever survived one. It's called the Widowmaker, and I know that for a fact. I've typed that word a hundred times, uh, transcribed that word a hundred times for cardiology. It's called the Widowmaker, the uh, uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction in the left anterior descending artery. And I've had two, you're not supposed to survive one. I will certainly not survive the third. That is what the cardiologists have said. And that was in large measure part of my decision to come when I did. 18 months ago, made, you know, made good on my third promise to come live in Thailand. Ah, uh, cause I didn't think I had much time left. Uh, turns out according to PU Rock, if I'm getting that right. Uh, no, 90% of people survive the STEMI and the LAD. Now I haven't gone and fact check this cause I'm very happy to hear this news. Uh, I'm so happy I went out uh, and bought a pack of cigarettes. I hadn't smoked since Thanksgiving. That's two months I hadn't smoked, but Pure Rock gave me carte blanche to smoke again. So I very much appreciate that. I'm looking forward to many, many more years of smoking a pack a day. Thank you, Pure Rock. On the issue of speech, uh, listen, this country, you, you, if you've chosen to live in Thailand or you wish to come live in Thailand, but you demand the right of free speech, you know, there's none of that here. There's no free speech here. I want you to try an experiment. Go ask your best Thai friend about uh, Het Tu La Ho, Het Tu La Ho, the events of October 6th. Ask them about uh, if they believe there was tacit support for the events of October 6th from the highest echelons of government, from revered institutions, were revered institutions at least tacitly behind the events of October 6th, 1976. Hit to la Ask your best Thai friends, see what they do. They'll and then they'll they'll deny knowledge. They'll they'll just and they'll change the subject. They'll move on. There are certain things colored yellow you dare not speak of in this country, and that's relaxing. Obviously, that's if you watch the news, that's loosening up. But no, if you choose to come to Thailand, you you are choosing to sacrifice in large measure your right of free speech. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, when like Fraser, this is the last thing I swear, and then I'll read the story. Eight minutes, eight minutes of housekeeping, I'm sorry. Uh, I get carried away. So, so, so uh, uh, I, I play with these clickbait titles, right? Hopefully, if you're a subscriber or if you've watched a couple videos, you realize it's a joke, right? Every video, I stick some silly clickbait title on it that at least partially relates to what's in the video. So last week was, uh, uh, well, oh, why would I appear on some sleazy Thailand vlog, in quotes, because it wasn't said by me, it was said by a guy named Dana Snow. Well, a lot of people, including Fraser, uh, my favorite troll, wrote in to say, uh, well, you'll appear on anything, Steve. And they didn't watch the video. They commented without watching the video. Right? They thought I was saying, which was the intention, right? It's a joke title. It's a clickbait title. 
But you have to get the joke, you have to watch the video. And they didn't get the joke. They obviously didn't watch the video, but they still commented on it. Listen, if you're a proponent of free speech, uh, that doesn't mean you can say anything you want about something you haven't experienced, something you haven't read, something you haven't listened to. Uh, no, you, you, you gotta watch it first, Fraser. All right. That was it. Uh, so that's the housekeeping. So I'm gonna read you a story. It's called Sometimes a Great Notion. And it's from the book Expat Days and I printed it out with a great big font to help me read it. And now I'm, I'm not finding the printout. Uh, so I just had it in my hand. I don't want to get up and go look for it. So I'm just going to read it from the book. That necessitates taking off my glasses. No, I have not yet trimmed my eyebrows. I, I like to go to the barber, get a haircut, have him do the ears, the nose, and the eyebrows, right? I'm an old man. I also get many petties. I don't try to cut my own finger and toenails. But, but at any rate, uh, that's not it. Ah, here it is. Here it is. It's very short, like four or five minutes to read it. Uh, find something to do with your hands. You don't have to stare at my face while I read this. And I hope the mic's working this morning. All right. Sometimes Great Notion by Steve Ross, originally published in The Nation in 1990. One, two, three, 93. And uh, published subsequently in the Phuket Gazette, probably a couple in-flight magazines around the Pacific Rim, and most recently in uh, Expat Days, available uh, on uh, Amazon and other platforms. Though Thais generally tolerate the tourists, most expatriate residents of Phuket don't like them. The four million foreign visitors to the island, you know, 35 years ago, uh, each year leave an impression that they are crude, boorish, and ill-mannered, given to drunkenness and thievery, and worst of all, arguing about the price of things. We who live here must suffer with that negative impression each time we go to the market, take a bus, or attend a dinner party. Here's an example of why expats won't talk to tourists and why the Thais consider tourists to be the world's largest traveling circus made up entirely of clowns who throw money at the audience. One day, a long time ago, well, it would have been two or three years when I wrote this. Now it is a long time ago. One day, a long time ago, a tourist woke up on the last day of a three-month holiday on Phuket. He had spent the whole three months in the bars of Patong Beach. He had one of those dangerous rented motorcycles and a bored bar girl to ride pillion. On his last morning on the island, he decided to take a road trip. Leaving his supercargo snoring into her pillow, he got on the main highway and headed north. He went by the old beach road, which you could only travel on a dirt bike in those days, stopping frequently to stare out to sea and think. At Nayang, he stopped for a swim. And while he was floating on his back in the still waters, staring up at the crescent of jungle crowded hills and amethyst sky, he decided that he loved Phuket so much that he would come back and live there. He thought he would like to own a bar and spend his days in a hammock, drinking out of a coconut shell while his pillion rider rubbed his feet. The decision elated him, and he got back on the main road south with only a little gas left in his tank, but a song in his heart. Just after passing the Heroines Monument, he saw the golden spires of Wat Ta Rua, and on an inspiration decided to go in and make a little merit to celebrate his life-altering decision. He had seen the bar girls lighting incense at their little Buddha shrines each evening, and his pillion rider had actually taught him how to chant 
Namodasa, which I still chant every morning. Thank you, Gao. He parked his big, loud, ugly bike next to the Weehan and stepped inside, being careful to remove his shoes first. It was just after 11 a.m., and the monks were all sitting down to their daily meals inside their kutis, so the compound was deserted. Dressed in a pair of bathing trunks and a fanny pack and nothing else, the tourist approached the presiding Buddha image. He knelt before the big golden statue, touched his forehead to the floor three times, selected three sticks of incense from the, incense, from the bowl and lit them. He held them to his forehead and knelt before the Buddha, praying for success in his new life. He stuck the incense into the brazier and he walked out, feeling enormously proud of himself. He took 10 baht out of his fanny pack and was looking for some place to put it when he noticed the monk. The monk was striding toward the tourist so fast that his robes were flapping in the wind. His face was livid with rage. The tourist thought, wow, I wonder what could be so bad it makes a monk display open emotion like that. Well, at least now I know what to do with my 10 baht. The tourist approached the monk with the money held out in one hand, but the monk slapped the money out of it, out, slapped the money away, and it fluttered to the ground. The monk shook his finger in front of the tourist's nose, and in very good English, told him that by entering the temple nearly naked, he had committed a gravest sin, a grievous sin, and insulted the Buddha. Although the tourist towered over the monk and outweighed him by almost a hundred pounds, he felt very small. The tourist apologized, explained why he had wanted to come into the temple and asked what he could do to make amends. The monk's attitude immediately softened and he sat down with the tourist under the shade of a tree and explained some of the tenets of Buddhism. They spent most of an hour there. And it was only a long time later that the tourist realized that the monk had sacrificed his one daily meal in order to sit under the tree and teach him. Nobody picked up the ten baht out of the dust. It may still be there. The tourist went home the next day, but the shame he felt on the grounds of Wat Tagra never left him. He spent a year wrapping up his affairs before moving back to Phuket, and during that time he studied the Dharma, meditation, and Thai language at his local Thai Buddhist temple. He checked books out of the library and studied Thai history, arts, and culture. He was sending money to his pillion rider, and she wrote him a letter a week in Thai. Since these letters were full of tender endearments, he was embarrassed to have them translated, so he taught himself to read Thai, letter by letter, character by character. He sent her money for a year, and when he returned, discovered that she'd still been working in the bar all that time, so he left her. It cost him 10,000 baht per month to learn how to read Thai, but he learned. The tourist came back to Phuket as he had promised himself that day on Nayang Beach, but he didn't buy a bar. He knew by then that Phuket had more than enough bars, more than enough of the kind of tourist who hangs around in bars, and far too many bored pillion riders. He found other ways to make a living, and he's here still, married with a couple of kids, paying his taxes, supporting the local economy. He still loves Phuket, and he still learns something new about the place every day. At some point, he began to write about what he was learning, and eventually somebody decided to publish what he'd written in a book. In fact, you just finished reading that book. Expat Days by Steve Ross, available on Amazon for Kindle. All right, that's it.
that's that's that was the first time I made a decision to come to Thailand, <laughs> to come live in Thailand. It took me three times to get it right, but I think I got it right this time, and it's not on Phuket. In the time it took me to get my act together and come back to live here for the final time, uh, they changed Phuket, they wrecked it. And uh, yeah, it's not about, the dream is no longer there. The dream is on Turtle Beach. And I'll just swing this around. Uh, this is the view this morning. Uh, I think, you know, it's not gonna let you uh, see the ocean because of the light, uh, but there's nothing really to look at this time of day. We do sunsets here. We don't bother with sunrise. Uh, everybody's working at sunrise. Everybody went out in their boats an hour ago. All right, that's it. Uh, like, subscribe, share, be aware. Uh, th there's more after this, but, but this is the end of the monologue. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention. This is the best time of my week. This is really important to me. And uh, I hope it's at least a little bit important to you. Uh, and I will see you. Oh, I love you. Uh, that's it. Simple. I'll see you next week. There we go. This is Franek, and he's painting himself a uh, Boontong's turtle. And my dream of an artist colony has come true. A fellow artist has come to create with me, and I'm very grateful. Well, the government is having a beach cleanup day. What day cup? What day cup? Nobody told me about it. They're all out there cleaning my beach in their yellow shirts. And here I am shirtless watching YouTube videos. Hmm. We've been discussing all morning what shirts we should wear in the parade, the Turtle Day Parade. And Chum Nan is is liking <clears throat> liking these shirts. I can't say I'm very impressed, but thank you for cleaning my beach, you guys. Stunning camera work, don't you think? Whatever shaves your sheep, whatever bakes your glam, whatever digs your feet, whatever smokes your ham. Whatever blows your nose, whatever chews your bone Whatever squirts your hose, whatever sings your song Do it after but do it well Nobody knows and there's no way to tell When you ride and This shit you be doing now to me You be never put it out to me Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it up, shoot down to the jungle